So welcome everyone. Um, thank you for joining. Um, this is the monthly yeah, team meeting uh, from everyone working on Everest. Um, I'm Marco. I'm uh, one from the team members from Pionics uh, who initiated this, pro uh, this project. Oh, one second, someone else is joining. I have to put this for some seconds on the screen, antitrust policy, because you might be competitors. So there's some legal disclaimer here. So um, <laughs> let's get it started. Um, the rough agenda for today is what's Everest um, for those of you who are new today, uh, what's new since the last meeting a month ago, uh, what will happen next, and then we can have an open discussion off the record afterwards. So what is Everest? Um, we are part of the Linux Foundation Energy. There's a big software stack all around energy generation, management, distribution, and Everest is basically the component connecting all of this energy ecosystem to the car. Um, so you could call it the EV gateway, but it looks so small on this slide, but actually it's huge because uh, these charge points have to connect a lot of spaces. Yes, they have to connect the energy domain, but also local generation. They have to connect to cars and all kind of protocols they are speaking. They have to loop in the humans and all kind of cloud interfaces. And current standards are very often very different interpreted and differently implemented. So you have a high fault rate, you have a big market fragmentation, and uh, the industry is paying a lot for unneeded co-development, and the customers are suffering. And Everest is here to change that. Um, the idea is to have for all of those components I just mentioned, a lot of different options on how to connect that. So different interfaces and APIs. And we'll get started with a base set of APIs. So yeah, let's say a subset of what you see on the screen is implemented or in the process of getting implemented. For example, EE bus is currently not done, but SunSpec is. Um, and the software is done in a very modular way. So you probably can't see the details here, but you can afterwards look in the architecture diagram. Um, there are different modules communicating via MQTT to each other within the charge point. Everything can be swapped out to an alternative version, like you can have different energy price providers, you can have different solar system connectors, and you can different can could get different hardware abstraction layers. Um, so this is meant to be ported on any hardware. Um, so whatever you have in mind, uh, the idea is you or us or we can get it running on that as soon as it supports a basic minimum small Linux footprint. And yes, our company also offers charge points, but only for development purposes. So we're not planning to sell a lot of this. Uh, it's just a development kit. So in case you're interested of getting started with the software stack really quickly, we built that for our own, but we also found it useful for any, everyone else. So the idea is, yes, it runs on everything, but if you just want to get it started and want to play around with functions, maybe that's something for you. So this is an offer of Pionix. So what's new? So let me hand over to Cornelius. Yeah, so let's just have a very quick look on what uh, happened since the last C TSC meetings. Um, on the next slide, you will basically see all the pull requests that happened in the meantime. I will not go into detail for each of the pull requests, um, but give more a general overview of the more important things that happened. So um, in the Everest Utils repository, uh, most of the changes were about uh, improving the auto-generated code and moving part of the auto-generated code out of the repository that actually cleaned up the code base quite a bit. Um, and the biggest change here um, that also touches a lot of different repositories is uh, that we now support um, lists of requirements. Um, so previously, um, when a module requires uh, another module, it's basically a one-to-one -one relation or it's optional. Um, but one module cannot require, let's say, n um, um, other modules of the same type uh, without knowing the number of n beforehand. And this basically now changed. So you can say, for, for example, you can write a module that, for example, requires n power meters and can deal with that. And then um, in the uh, config JSON where the connections between the modules are made, um, you can connect one to that. Uh, module or you can connect three power meters or whatever and within the code you actually get an array um, 
of the connections and can deal with that. So um, that was a relatively big um, change, even though it doesn't look like that, and touches almost uh, every repository in the Everest. Um, we did a bit of work on the documentation. There's still work to be done there, but um, it improved quite a bit. Um, and one of the big new things is that we just uploaded uh, the open source implementation of the Slack layer, um, which uh, was rewritten basically completely from scratch. So in many of the um, implementations I've seen so far, um, uh, the Qualcomm um, open PLC utils is being used and we use that as well, but the Slack implementation in that is not really conforming to the standard. Um, so we basically rewrote it from scratch and have a really um, slim implementation in C++ that only has um, what, what's needed basically as a dependency and you can drop the big Qualcomm dependency completely here. Um, next slide, Marco. Yeah, so on the framework, there was some improvements being done about the logging and the error handling to um, simplify debugging of errors. Um, and of course, also here, one of the big changes was the support for the list of requirement, as I already said in the utils uh, repo. We also introduced a new library for formattings of strings for the logging that makes uh, the logging a lot more readable and nicer. Um, and also backtrace functionality was added to the logging. Um, to aid debugging here. Um, yeah, next slide. Um, yeah, so in Everest core, um, also the list of requirements was the biggest change here, basically. Um, and we added a few smaller things, which I won't go into detail. So. Yeah, so what's next? Um, so currently, um, it's basically running on this dedicated hardware, but uh, but as we said, it should be portable to almost any hardware that runs embedded Linux quite easily. And for now, we're trying to get basically two uh, use cases running first. And one is uh, smart charging at home, so with solar integration and everything and energy management. And the other use case is um, public AC charging with basically payment and integration of the standard OCPP backend. And, um, the work that's currently going on, we mostly focus on improving the ISO 15.11.8 implementation and the Slack stack and everything that's needed for that. Um, there's a lot of work going on on the OCPP 1.6 stack to add the remaining profiles that are still missing. The core implementation basically is done. Um, and we put some effort into a new energy management architecture. This basically has been reworked completely. Um, but it's not really implemented yet fully, and probably you will see more in the next TSC or in the work meetings in between, if you're interested into that. And um, as always, um, your help is wanted too. So if you want to contribute anywhere in Everest, just let us know. Um, we are a truly open and inclusive project, so everybody is really welcome um, to join. Next. Um, if we look on our roadmap, there's a lot of things that we want to do. Not everything is really started yet, but um, we have a lot of ideas of what we want to achieve. Um, our next priority basically will be a web interface for the configuration. So currently, if you assemble basically your Everest installation out of the modules, this has to be done by writing a config JSON file that um, lists the modules that you want to load and um, basically connect them in the way you want them. Um, we're planning to have a graphical interface for that where you can basically just drag the modules in and you can draw the connections to configure your charging solution. Um, this is something that's not started yet, but um, it's on our list. Um, we will, of course, also implement OCPP 2.01. And um, But before that, we really want to finish the 1.6 version with all the um, profiles. Um, we will do a lot of tests with different cars. Um, we also will at some point rewrite the ISO 15.11.8 stack because the one we're currently using supports only the dash 2 norm. But once the dash 20 norm is public, um, we'll basically rewrite uh, the stack to support that one as well. 
um, as well as the old Deanspec 7121 for DC charging with older cars. Um, uh, we'll work on grid integration with ADR and USEF. Um, of course, also smart home integration for the um, smart home use case with EE bus and uh, smart meter integration and all that. Um, and we will improve um, the hardware driver section to support a lot more power meters and uh, other charging controller hardware as well. And um, we'll include payment APIs, of course. Um, yeah, and there will be special plugins for new hardware from different startups. So there's one from HeyCharge in the works. Um, from Byteret, there will be some additions. And um, of course, we're always open to more. So if you have ideas, just let us know. And even better, also contribute to that. Um, we will be running at least one or two Google or Summer of Code projects in the summer uh, to help improve Everest. And there's a lot of more things we're um, trying to get done in the background. So stay tuned. So I think um, that's close the official stage. I will stop the recording.